Hey folks, so today we're going to take a look at how we can best display our work. So we're going to need to curate a portfolio of our best work. And we want to take a look at some different ways that we can get employers to look at that work so that we can put ourselves at the top of the job pile. And really when we talk about a portfolio of work, to a large degree we're talking about branding our skill set. We can do that in various different ways. When we think about our portfolio of work and why we're doing this, really we want to showcase our particular skill sets. We want to try and gain as much exposure as we can and the process of showing work and organizing work to show to people will require us to polish our work to a higher degree. So it's, it's quite a good way to force yourself to push the work on as much as you can. Now, traditionally within visual effects and with animation, we display the work through the use of a demo reel. And this is particularly important, obviously, for motion-based work. So animation, effects, rigging, compositing, all of those skill sets in particular will require a demo reel of some kind so that you can show off your motion work. So traditionally, we also show off still work, such as visual development work, concept work, production artwork, map paintings and modeling work that in and of itself is not motion based. Traditionally, we show that through a demo reel as well. It is still very widely accepted to do non motion based work in a demo reel kind of way. But there is some other options uh, nowadays. We have online sites that are particularly artist friendly, so they don't have a high overhead in terms of uh, learning to code websites. They can look quite professional and they have a social aspect to them. And examples of this would be things like Behance, um, ArtStation, Instagram, etc. Right, uh, And they'll all have different audiences, but they will have large audiences and much larger audiences than you will potentially draw to your own personal website. There are specific ones aimed towards CG. Uh, ArtStation would be a good example of that. And in the case of modeling, we've seen in the last two or three years the kind of rise of 3D players like Sketchfab. Sometimes these sites can be a little bit generic and they can feel maybe a little bit hobbyist. Quite a few of the sites offer professional features and templates so you can get a professional look. Now, there can be a cost to that. So from an employer point of view, the employer can look at your portfolio of work and can really see what they're getting. They can see where your skill sets are. And that is somewhat unique, I guess, to the design world in that we can really show the actual quality of our work. What's not different in the design world to any other job is really the, the questions that are being asked are exactly the same. When we're designing our portfolio, when we want to decide what goes in and what goes out, Really, we need to ask just two basic questions, right? We're applying for a job. That's the core purpose of doing this. So really, all of our portfolio then, if we think of it in terms of a branding exercise, the, the question that we're asking ourselves is, what role would I like? What skill set am I promoting here? The employer is asking the same question that all employers ask. It's not specific to design at all. And that's, what problem do you solve? You know, what am I paying you for? And that's an important question for us to keep asking when we're putting things into our portfolio. So in the end, the portfolio branding is aimed towards employers. And really, that's the question they're asking. What problem do you solve? And that's the question that our, our portfolio needs to answer. So when we're trying to decide what goes in or what stays out, that's the question that we should ask ourselves. So just to recap this intro section on portfolios and branding. We've taken a brief look at the different types of portfolios that we can create. And in particular, we will be looking at demo reels and online material that we can use to promote our work. We've discussed briefly what a portfolio is for and the core message that we're trying to get across in our portfolio. And that will help us to define the kind of content that should be going in and should be staying out. In the next video, we'll spend a little bit of time looking at the presentation and how we best want to think about the structure and the format uh, of the content we will need for our reel and also for our site. So I'll see you in that video.